Right, as we kick off the update from this Memorial Day weekend, we're down here talking with Dan Erickson. Dan is a military veteran. We'll have him tell his story in a moment. Dan recently was on the Freedom Flight. He just got back recently. We're going to have him talk about that. But Dan, ironically, as we sit down this Memorial Day weekend, how ironic we're down here at the Veterans Memorial in Toma, all the veterans, names behind us, around us. How ironic to be sitting down here to tell your story on this Memorial Day weekend. That indeed it is, Greg, and I want to thank all of those who were the people behind this project because it's a fitting memorial to those who served in all branches of the military in the Toma area. Recently got back from Freedom Flight less than a week ago. We want you to tell that story in a moment, but before that, give me uh, your military background. Talk about that for me, Dan, if you don't mind. I will do that, Greg. I was one of those who was drafted back during the Vietnam War. In fact, I got my draft notice in 1965. I was 20 years old, so I was older than some at that time. And I didn't see myself as an Army infantry person, so I took my draft notice to the local Navy recruiter and asked if he might be able to assist me in enlisting in the Navy, and he was more than happy to do so. When he found out that I would like to be a hospital corpsman, that made him even more happy because the buildup in Vietnam was underway and obviously the need for medical personnel was great. And so that's what happened. I got drafted, but I ended up in the United States Navy. Your dad was also in the military, so you have a military background with, military background with family, correct? That's correct, Greg. My dad, believe it or not, was in World War I. He served his time in the European theater at Verdun, France. And many, many, many years later, um, I was fortunate to be able to visit the area where he served when I was activated for Desert Shield, Desert Storm, and was stationed at Army Regional Medical Center in Landstuhl, Germany. Talking about with Dan Erickson. Dan was just recently on the Freedom Flight to honor the veterans. Dan, before we talk about the Freedom Flight itself, let's go back a little bit. How many years ago did you apply to try to be on the Freedom Flight? Give me a little background on that. How long ago did you say, I want to be a part of this, I hope to be a part of this? Uh, how many years? Give me a time frame. How long ago was that? Greg, it was probably in the neighborhood of five years. Okay. Um, but then, of course, COVID interrupted, so two of those years were canceled as far as the flights um, because of COVID. So um, when I did get the call that I had been accepted earlier this year, um, they told me then at that time that I probably would have gone on the honor flight uh, sooner if it hadn't been for COVID. But I was extremely grateful to be able to participate in this one that just happened. It, ha it was the 28th uh, Freedom Honor flight out of La Crosse. And the one thing we talk about when we set this interview up last week, it, it's kind of a one day, one day deal, isn't it? It's a one day deal. You get up very early in the morning <laughs> and those who don't live as close to La Crosse as I, um, they, some, some of them said that they were up as early as two o'clock in the morning to make it to the airport. They wanted us there shortly after five in the morning. The flight departed at seven in the morning and we returned about 1045 that evening. How do you find out you're going to go on the Freedom Honor flight? How, does the, how do you find that out? I got home from attending worship service one Sunday and I had a voicemail message and it was a kind young lady who told me that I had been accepted to fly out on the 28th Freedom Flight. And so that's how I learned that, that I had been accepted. All right, you know you're going on the Freedom Honor Flight. You know you're leaving on a Saturday. Before you even get on the plane, do you kind of have an idea of how it's gonna go? And if so, was it everything you thought it would be or more? Um, I had a vague idea as to what would transpire based on what some others had told me, but also based on what the 
volunteers with the organization itself had set the various monuments that we would visit, the Lincoln Memorial um, and other, other sites unique to Washington, D.C. And so to answer your question directly then, um, it was more than what I had anticipated. In what way? In what ways was it more than you anticipated, Dan? I knew that the Vietnam Wall would be emotional for those of us who served in sure. Vietnam. Obviously, yes. Um, it was the first time that I had been to that wall. When I looked at those 58,000 names on that wall, it evoked not only memories of those that I served with and didn't, those that didn't return, but it wasn't just names that I saw. I saw faces, faces that were forever young and remain forever young. Those who were not able to experience the happiness of a family, children, grandchildren, at my age, great-grandchildren, so it was beyond the, beyond the names on that wall, it was the faces of some of those that were associated with my service in Vietnam. Then, as you mentioned earlier, part of your time in the military was in Vietnam. I have other friends, very good friends, that were in Vietnam that to this day will not talk about it. Does that surprise you? No, it doesn't at all. Um, when we came back from, when I came back from Vietnam, <clears throat> um, it wasn't something that you spoke of because much of the public looked disfavorably upon Vietnam veterans and the mission that they carried out um, for years following. One would not really know that I was a Vietnam war veteran unless I said so, and rarely did I say that. So, um, yeah, we were not looked upon with favor. Um, part of the weekend, the week, the day, in Washington, D.C., was the national welcome home ceremony that the Washington, D.C. area specifically was engaged in, 13th through the 15th of May, and it, that's what it was called, was Welcome Home. It was observing the 50th anniversary of the ending of the Vietnam War. There was no hero's welcome when Vietnam ended, as you know, as a Vietnam veteran. It's been a while, but when you look back on it, are you bitter that there wasn't? You think about that, or you put that behind you? No, I'm not bitter. Um, because I was on the receiving end of the Persian Gulf War, the first Persian Gulf War, Desert Shield, Desert Storm. I was activated for that as a sergeant first class in the Army Reserves at that time. I served with the 44th General Hospital out of Madison. We trained here in Toma. It was one of their training sites. So while Vietnam, those of us in the Navy, medical department, we, we left for Vietnam alone. We didn't go as a unit. We got individual orders, so we left alone and we came home alone. Contrast that to the Persian Gulf War, <clears throat> most of the veterans who served, either in theater or in support of the war, left in units. And so when we left, when we departed, the 44th General Hospital departed for our duty at Landstuhl Army Regional Medical Center in Germany. We flew out of Volk Field, right down the street, down the road, in a Transworld Airline, 747. Transworld Airline, of course, has been long gone, but uh, that's how we left as a unit, and that's how we returned to the same Volk Field in a Transworld Airline 747. And so we were welcomed not only by family, but by many, unlike Vietnam, where we departed alone and came home alone. 
Right on the update, we're talking with Dan Erickson. Dan is, Dan is a military veteran, served time in Vietnam and other things. Recently was on the Freedom Honor flight, just got back less than a week ago. Dan, take me back to the wall. You know you're, you know you're going to see the wall honoring the Vietnam, the people that we lost in Vietnam. You know you're going to see names of people you work with, people in your unit. Keeping that in mind, when that happens, were you ready for that moment? Or was it still very emotional? I imagine it was very emotional, but were you ready for that moment? I wasn't as ready as I thought I would be. <clears throat> Emotions ran strong. They ran deep. <clears throat> and that's, that's what I'll say about that. Do you still stay in touch with some of the unit that you were in in Vietnam? Do you still stay in touch with them? Yeah, we have over the course of the years. Not a whole lot, but there are a few. A friend of mine who I went to high school with, he, uh, he and I served in Vietnam in the same battalion. He was with one of the other companies than I was. He was Bravo Company and I was Charlie Company, but we were still together as a battalion. And uh, so he was one, obviously, that I maintained relationships with, but also there were others in the unit as well, some in the surrounding Minnesota and Iowa area. Then let's jump back to your day, your freedom flight, honor, freedom honor flight. You get on the plane, to get there, get on the plane to come back. Take me in between, what does your day consist of? What's your day consist of once you get off the plane? Well, initially, it was a unique departure from La Crosse. Sadly, one of the veterans who was scheduled to fly out with the 94 of us that ultimately did fly that day, between our orientation gathering of April 24th, where we would learn specifics about the upcoming trip, he passed away. Wow. And so, leading the boarding process was a flag presentation to his family, along with the playing of taps. So that set in motion the emotions for the day, knowing that it was <clears throat> going to be quite impacting. Um, I think you asked me how, how the day progressed, if I'm correct. I'm guessing, okay, you, you get off the plane. Once you get there, are you kind of on your own? You decide what direction you want to go. You're kind of on your own. Do they take you around as a group? How does that all work? Each veteran was assigned a family member they call a guardian, and if not a family member, um, another veteran's family member. So for me, I would have liked to have had my granddaughter go with me, sure. but that sure. didn't happen. And so um, I had another individual from Toma who was with his dad, and he was, in effect, my guardian. So we're supposed to stay together so that we keep tabs on where we are, make sure that we don't get lost and that sort of thing. Sure. But uniquely, um, what I would like to say about that flight, um, Greg, is the patriotic aspect of it with the flags and the patriotic bunting and various other things that were a part of the aircraft cabin itself. But as we approached Reagan National Airport in Washington, D.C., as we were taxiing toward the gate, and we had a police escort. Wow. And as we got closer to the gate, two fire trucks were on one side of the plane and the other on the other, and they sprayed the water, which is a tradition. Um, and so I was wondering why the windows on the plane were so wet, and then I realized <laughs> that, that the water was being showered on the aircraft, and the gate itself was decked out in patriotic flags and other memorabilia. But the thing that was very attention-getting and very emotional, to be honest with you, when we got to the end of the ramp and walked into the airport itself, I don't know how many there were, but there were many Washingtonians who were there to greet us yeah. with signs, banners, flags, 
waving enthusiastically and each one of them shouting, welcome home. Wow. And those two words hit the heart heavy. So for veterans looking in right now, Dan, as you wrap it up with Dan Erickson, a military veteran, spent a lot of time in Vietnam, as we've talked about, among other things. Less than a week ago, took the, the honor flight, a one-day event, you leave in the morning, you come back at night. Dan waited almost five years to get on the honor flight, obviously, quite the experiences you've talked about, but for the veterans looking in, Dan, that maybe are on that list, like you were at one time, to do this, what would you say to them? Absolutely, go for it. <laughs> um, the all-volunteer staff that has been doing this now for the 28th time, this fall will be the 29th, they are remarkable people. They are truly, truly remarkable. Most of them are veterans themselves, or many of them are, and they're very dedicated to the veteran, to the veterans, those who served in various wars. Of course, we have very few World War II left. Um, there were four uh, Korean War veterans that were a part of the flight, the 28th that I just took, and so it was good to have them with us as well. Um, but you won't regret it. You absolutely will not regret it. It is fast-paced, no doubt about it, but when you can walk up to Abraham Lincoln at the Lincoln Memorial and read the Gettysburg Address and his various other speeches as the Civil War president, it gives you a much greater, deeper appreciation of what he really did for our country in keeping it together, holding it together following the Civil War. So not only that, but all of the other monuments. Um, it's, it's, it's a tremendous view. The Air Force veteran, the Air Force monument, for example, was one of the latter, later ones in that day. And as you, it's kind of on a hill, by the Arlington Cemetery, and as you look out from that that uh, monument, you see much of Washington, D.C. On your left is the Washington Monument, then the Jefferson Monument, then the United States Capitol, the Pentagon, all come into focus at just that one spot. So uh, it, it, it's, it's something that you will not forget and will appreciate, I think, even more the greatness of our country and the sacrifices made by those who served in the various branches of service, especially in conflict, as to the preservation of the greatest nation that has ever existed on this earth. Dan, take me back to day one. You've already you gone on the honor flight. You waited five years to get on the honor flight. Does a family member say, hey, you should do it? You say, I want to do it on my own. How does that all come together? Take me back to day one when you say, I'm going to throw my hat in the ring to try to do what you just did. How does that all come together? Um, I think probably I was the impetus for that because I strongly, before I check out, I definitely wanted to be a part of the Freedom Honor Flight to be able to especially take in the Vietnam Memorial, yeah. the wall itself, but all of the other ones as well. But um, So yes, I was supported strongly by my family. Um, unfortunately, there was a bit of miscommunication where one of my family members could have gone with me, but I didn't realize that it was for ambulatory veterans. I thought it was more for those who might need assistance, like being in a wheelchair or what have you. So. As it turned out, my granddaughter would have gone with me, but that didn't happen. But I'm just grateful for the opportunity to have been able to participate um, before my health might deteriorate, um, so I could, you know, actively take part in in a in a very packed day, um, which included you know, the Arlington Cemetery, which of course was very moving, but. But also I'd like to say this, Greg, we hear of the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier and we, we understand the importance of it, but witnessing the changing of the guard was truly emotional. 
um, almost as emotional as the Vietnam Wall. Unfortunately, it was a cloudy day all day in Washington, and during that time frame, which was late afternoon, it rained, and it rained pretty steady. So, <clears throat> uh, thankfully, I bought a water-resistant light jacket before I left Toma, and I'm glad I had it because it was dripping um, during that ceremony. But this, what a sobering ceremony, and 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 what a what a tribute to those who have served and died for the cause of freedom and who remain unknown but to God. Well, you and I talked a little more than a week before you even go on the honor flight, and at that time you were very much looking forward to it. And from what you've told me in the little time we've talked, Dan, it was really everything you thought and more, wasn't it? It, it absolutely was. It absolutely was, and I would encourage anyone who is thinking about, or if they have not made application, um, to, to definitely do that. You'll never meet a more accommodating volunteer staff than those who are associated with the Freedom Honor Flight, especially the lacrosse chapter. Um, I might also give them a plug at this point. They operate exclusively through contributions. And so any of you who might be watching this or might have seen the, the uh, send-off and the and the return of that of this particular flight on local television stations. Um, if you feel the urge, your contributions would be greatly appreciated by the volunteer staff of Freedom Honor Flight. So as you wrap it up with Dan Erickson, Dan for veterans looking in right now that say, hey, I, I would love to do this, I've heard about it. I don't know how to go about making it happen. How do you make it happen if a veteran's looking in right now and they want to be on the, the honor flight as you just were, how do they get the ball rolling? The simplest way is if most of us, even in our older age, are computer literate. So all yeah. we have to do yeah. is Google okay. Freedom Honor Flight and up it will come along with an application to submit for consideration to leave. So. That, that, I think, would be the easiest way to do it. And if you have difficulty operating computers, um, I'm sure that younger members in your family will gladly help you do that. Uh, but that's how I did it. I, I simply Googled and got online and came up with the application to apply, and, and that's how it came into being. And as you mentioned earlier, because of COVID, you were on the list for five years. But when you, felt, when you fill out the application day one, was there any doubt in your mind they, you, they may not get back you? Any doubt in your mind at all from day one? No, they told me initially when they got my application, there were still a number of Vietnam, I mean, excuse me, there were still a number of World War II veterans. They, of course, took priority and Korean War veterans. And then, of course, they moved down to the Vietnam veterans. So um, they told me that it would be a number of years and, of course, um, that was easily acceptable. If, 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 an, if an individual has a health issue that may be causing an imminent departure, um, they will take that into account so that veterans who are, whose lives may not be that great or that long because of a health condition, they take that into account and try to move move you into a slot so that you'll be able to see the monuments before you pass to the great beyond. So in a perfect world, if you could do it again, would you do it again? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I would do it in a heartbeat, Greg. And I would, I would, again, strongly encourage those who have not made application yeah. to, to, to apply. Um, it's, it's, it's just remarkable. I'll, t I'll tell you one thing, um, the, the staff, is just so accommodating, so accommodating, and you c continually hear for Viet, for especially for us Vietnam veterans, you know, welcome home, yeah. um, and those two words are are more emotional filling than what one might think they could be, um, but the the uh, and I just lost my train of thought. Um, that happens to old people. I, I've been there, I've been there. Yeah. Um, well, 
But the bottom line is, you went on the Freedom Honor flight, not regretting it, obviously. Again, we can't emphasize enough, if veterans are looking in that have not done this, you're not the only military veteran, Dan, I've talked to that's been on it, and your, your story is very similar in a lot of ways. It's an, and the bottom line is, without blowing out of proportion, it's an experience nobody would ever forget, would they? No, it's, it's, it's an unequaled experience. I mean, it truly is. And Greg, this a little birdie, I don't know if you saw him fly past me, but he just dropped me the note that this is what I, what I had forgotten. Okay. Important to all military, whether you're serving in a war zone or elsewhere, was mail call. And it was an important event, important time of the day, sometimes week, if you're in a combat area, not a frequent occurrence. But this was a part, this was the surprise part of the, of the trip. Veterans who had served or had gone in prior Freedom Flights, um, they knew that on the return flight to La Crosse, the volunteer staff would hold a mail call. And it was remarkable. I can say this, during my entire year in Vietnam, and I have a large family, seven siblings, but everybody is busy and has their own lives to live at the time. But back in 1966 and 67, when I served in Vietnam, over the course of that year, I think I received less than a dozen pieces of mail over the course of that year. When they handed out the packet for my mail call on the plane, about 45 minutes out of La Crosse, it ended up that I received four times the amount of cards and letters that I received the entire time that I was in Vietnam in that one year. So that's part of the surprise package for our veterans who, are, and it's not going to be a surprise anymore because I just spilled the beans, but it's a remarkable thing in that family and friends, I had letters, cards from all across the nation, not just, not just from family and friends, um, who, whose message basically was, thank you for your service and welcome home. Dan, one final thought, just out of curiosity, this just came to mind. Can a person apply to go on the honor flight more than once? Or are you pretty much one and done? I'm pretty certain, I can't answer that with certainty, Greg, but I okay. believe that it's one and done because of the numbers sure. of veterans that have sure. still yet to, to participate Absolutely. in the program. So um, I, 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 I believe I'm correct in saying that, that you have the one opportunity and and now you may be able to volunteer for the organization itself and be a part of. That's what I. Yeah. Yeah. You, you may be able to go on future flights um, as a as a as a volunteer with the organization, but I think that would be about the only way you'd make it a make an encore appearance. It would make sense because there. Are, I would imagine as you and I are sitting down in the middle of May, you waited five years, two years. Of course, COVID came into play, but. There has to be veterans out there that have waited just as long and can't wait for their chance like you've got. Absolutely, right? Yeah, it, with, 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 without a doubt. Um, and, and of course, like it started out flying World War II veterans, Korean War veterans, now Vietnam veterans. Yep. But as the years progress, I'm sure that the numbers will include sure. the Persian Gulf War, the one that I served in or as, as a support uh, person but then also the, the Middle East conflicts, the Afghanistan and Iraq war, so. On this portion of the community update on this Memorial Day weekend, we're talking with Dan Erickson. Dan just recently was on the Freedom Honor Flight. He's a Vietnam veteran, among other things. And as Dan and I talked about the beginning of this interview, how ironic on this Memorial Day weekend, we're sitting down at the Veterans Memorial here in Toma. You can see some of the names behind Dan. It's a beautiful memorial. Dan, you have stones down here. It, it's a great thing for Tom, isn't it? It definitely is. And from my perspective, I am very grateful to have served in three branches of the service, the Navy and of course the Marine Corps, and um, then retiring as a Master Sergeant in the Army. Dan, thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. We're talking with Dan Erickson.
You've been in Tomi your whole life almost, haven't you? Well, not my whole life, but uh, following my my Navy. Okay. I got discharged in 1969, and okay. then I went to Brown Institute in Minneapolis for radio and television broadcasting. You and I knew yep. each other Absolutely. on that basis Absolutely. many, many years ago. Yep. Um, and so my first job was here in Tomo, Wisconsin, Hugh Dickey, WTMB Radio. Ironically, that's how I started on radio, too, my first job back in 79, and that was about the time you and I probably met each other, right? That would have been the okay. time. Okay. Yes, that would have been the time. So, yep, I moved here in 1971, and surprisingly, I haven't left. <laughs> and you're still driving bus, right? I'm still driving bus, 20, 27 or 26 years of driving school bus. I think I've retired twice. Uh huh. I am about to retire with the end of this school year for the third time, and I think at this point it's going to be for the final time. All right, so one more time again, we're hopefully not beating this to death. Dan was just recently on the Freedom Honor flight. If you're a veteran and have never been on the Freedom Honor flight, the main reason for sitting down is Dan, with Dan today is to say, do it, because it's an experience to never forget, right? It is absolutely that and more, Greg. So, yes, um, make application. It may take a while for you to be able to take the actual flight, but you will not regret it nor will your family member who yeah. typically can accompany, uh, accompany you. Um, it's, it's, it's a remarkable, remarkable day in the life of a veteran. Dan, once again, thank you for sitting down with me, telling your story. I really appreciate you doing this. Thank you. I appreciate your doing this as well, Greg, and not only this interview, but the many that you've done over the course of the years for the Tomo community. You are very much appreciated, and well, I say that from the bottom of my heart. Thank you, Dan. I appreciate you saying that. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So again, we've been talking to Dan Erickson down here at the Tomo Veterans Memorial on Memorial Day 2023, and there you see the stone for Dan down here at the memorial. So as we wrap it up, a tribute to all the veterans, as we honor all the veterans that have served on this Memorial Day weekend. And that's how we're going to wrap up this portion of the update for this Memorial Day weekend. We hope you enjoyed it here on the update. Health's Warren's Clinic provides convenient quality care for same day or next day appointments. At Toma Health Warren's Clinic, we're able to see patients for cough, sore throat, ear pain, and other minor illness and injuries. An um, appointment can be scheduled by contacting the clinic and we'll get you in that day or the next. Warren's Clinic also offers occupational health services such as pre-employment physicals and DOT exams. Toma Health Warren's Clinic offers convenient quality care when you need it most. So as we wrap up the update on this graduation weekend, we're going to take you out to Cranberry Country Lodge this past Thursday, May 25th, for the honors breakfast for the Thomas Senior High School. That's what you'll see next as the update continues. Uh, again, I just want to take the time to thank our sponsors, First Community Credit Union and TACU Credit Union. And also thank you for Tyson Copeland and the Wetlands Catering for helping to organize this to be able to put this on. And your continued supports of not just this event, but just um, so many different things that we do um, within our school and community. So thank you so much. For 
I'm going to start off the morning. We, we have a couple of special speakers. Um, the first one is Madeline Klein. She has she was a graduate from Toma High School last year. She just finished her first year of college at Cornell. And so we welcome her back, and I'd like to be able to welcome Maddie up to the stage to be able to give um, some, some words of wisdom, things that she has uh, been able to reflect upon uh, since leaving high school, things that she can be able to share with you as you guys do prepare to embark in your first year um, of, of postgraduate um, time as well. So with Maddie, would you please come up? graduating class of 2023. Congratulations to each and every one of you from graduating from Toma High School and continuing to set the standards for success even higher than your predecessors. You students are extremely distinguished and valuable to the institution that is education. Not only that, I know it to be true that you are a group of people where spirit and empathy runs deep. Graduating with honors is not a task achieved without hard work, and I'm so proud that those I speak for to, before today have dedicated much of their lives to greatness. That being said, allow not your achievements to be defined by your GPA, a stole, or even end after you walk across the stage. The pedigree of graduating with honors is mere ornamentation of your potential as future leaders of our generation. This honor is just the beginning of the rest of your life's accolades, so understand that while celebration is due, hard work lies ahead. Having graduated with the same honors as you, I naively assumed immediate success when entering Cornell University. I mean, I was supposed to be gifted, right? The fantasy of immediate success without sacrifice came crumbling down after I was swiftly humbled by being surrounded by the brightest minds from across the country and the world in a singular lecture hall. I was suddenly a body that filled a space a rude awakening of being a small fish in a giant pond. Until this point, I thought it to be unfathomable that I would face legitimate academic struggle. Swimming in a pond with multitudinous fish that were as smart and most smarter than me was terrifying. <coughs> the pond was all the more terrifying when I fell on the wrong side of the curve and it came to my preliminary exams, cried in the bathroom because my chemistry lab was so confusing, or felt like I had no true friends with my first semester of school. To be frank, before gathering myself after the first few weeks of the first semester, I was a bit of a nervous wreck. However, through the immense culture and setting shock came a great deal of learning, both academically and socially. Every single day at college, I had the opportunity to meet someone new. This rings true with my school's considerably large undergraduate population, but let it be known that wonderful strangers surround the spaces we fill every day. The diversity of ideas and people that exist beyond the walls of Toma High School is rich and beautiful. I have come across some of the most wonderful minds of our generation in the nine short months I spent in the middle of nowhere upstate New York. Those who once scared me with their intelligence and their fast-paced demeanor soon became my peers. Those I considered my main academic competitors soon became my study buddies. And those who I assumed to be so wildly different than me soon became my best friends. Transitioning into your collegiate and professional years, I wish to assure you that the whole imposter syndrome, small fish in a big pond, oh my gosh, I don't deserve to be here feeling, will eventually dissolve. And with this deconstruction will come a strong personal support network. I encourage you to make as many friends and become as familiar as with many people in your field as possible, as those you will soon meet will become the people you inevitably learn to love. Use the kindness in your hearts and the power in your minds to set yourselves up for success. Fear not the unknown, but embrace it in all its ambiguity and wonder. Graduating from high school is the beginning of the rest of your lives, so navigate the turbulent years ahead of you knowing that you're incredibly bright, worthy, and deserving. In my experience, the world and what it has to offer is at first terrifying, but upon greater inspection and exploration, you will find it to be incredibly fruitful. Give others the opportunity to know you as a scholar and a friend, spreading wisdom and kindness wherever you are. Graduate Toma High School and step into adulthood with your sights set high, class of 2023. Congratulations. All right, we have another graduating but now faculty member. Miss um, Lisa Winchell, I, I've had the pleasure of being able to work with her for the last 15 years. She just had a profound influence on so many students 
that had come through her classes and her programs. Um, she tried to retire once, and I think that she found that there's just so much purpose in what she does that she felt compelled to come back, so she came back for a few more years, but now she says she's retiring for good. But, um, it, it, it takes great pleasure in, for me to be able to invite uh, Ms. Winchell to the podium. Again, just a profound um, person who just has a tremendous amount of influence in a positive way on our students at home high school. You all got to hear Maddie and her um, wonderful speech, and that probably relates to you guys now more than mine will. It's more of a, re a reflective one, okay? So I'm going to talk about time. So what is 15 minutes? Life gives so many choices and paths. No matter what you choose, you must prioritize time. We never seem to have enough time. When I was 31 years old, I started my schooling back in 1992, and my children were three, five, and seven. I applied at UW La Crosse, and on the application, I checked the box labeled Displaced Homemaker. I believe they have removed that box. <laughs> was going to do this new path. I was commuting from Toma to La Crosse. I had three little kids, and I hadn't been in school for 13 years. I didn't even know if I was smart enough. One way I balanced my time was to set the alarm for 3 a.m. and pretend that was morning, so that I had uninterrupted time to study and write papers. I tried to schedule classes so that I only went three days a week. It took me longer, but I graduated with a Bachelor of Science in Art, excuse me, in 1996. I finished my Master's in Education in December 1999. Luckily, the Toma Middle School added an art position, and I started teaching at the age of 40 in the fall of 2000. This make, brings me back to time and how to balance what is important and to reflect on life. Back to being a teacher, I was incorporating more writing into my art projects and I came up with the following lesson and learned more about me through writing and reflection than I had thought about before. The painting one lesson began with my students watching a clip from the Dead Poet Society. The clip is when Robin Williams' character, John Keating, is addressing his poetry class. In the clip, Mr. Keating says, we don't read and write poetry because it's cute. We read and write poetry because we are members of the human race. Then he proceeds to tell the students to rip out the pages of the books. And he goes on by saying, medicine, law, business, and engineering, these are no noble pursuits and necessary to sustain life. But poetry, beauty, romance, and love, these are what we stay alive for. I then had students journal for 15 minutes what they thought of Mr. Keating's work. Students have written wonderful and poignant journals from this prompt throughout the years. Then they were to create an art project with the feelings or images that they wrote about. I thought I would share mine, what I think is important and what I live for and what I would do different. I remember trying to balance school and home life and in this time span, I raised three kids, got divorced, and got remarried. What did I miss? What, did I, what would I do over? I would get home from school, and my kids would say, Hey, Mom, watch me do this. Hey, Mom, can you help me do this? Hey, Mom, can you read me a book? Hey, Mom, can you play with me? And I would answer, sure. Just give me 15 minutes to finish dishes, laundry, or whatever I was doing and the 15 minutes would pass, and they would forget, and I would forget, and life went on. But every night we had a routine of singing the Jesus song, and you know it, Jesus loves me, this I know. And I would sing it to them, and then I would kiss them and tuck them in and say I love you, and I would shut off the lights. This ritual was important. I felt sad about missing that 15 minutes 
how many missed memories of 15 minutes were gone. So ask yourself, how will you balance time? And after all, what is 15 minutes? It is nothing. And yet, it is Secretary uh, and my administrative assistant, as well as uh, Bridget Kempel, who is our counseling secretary and uh, administrative assistant in that area for our counseling department, as well as um, Dawn Pierce. They, they have put in countless hours to help organize these things so that way we can get through this ceremony in a, in a smooth way and really get a chance to celebrate our students to the fullest. So I just want to take a moment to make sure that I thank them as well um, as we go through this. Um, <clears throat> At this time, um, I, I'm going to introduce Dr. Hansen. He's going to have a chance to say some things after we do the presentation of, of Stoltz. Um, so what we'll do is we will read off names of each of the honor students in attendance today. Uh, when your name is called, please come up and receive your honor stole. You'll actually come up this way on the stage. Um, I will place your honor stole on your neck, and then you'll be able to come up here. Uh, we ask that your mentor guest comes with you, and so you would be able to have your mentor guest stand about here, and then you would be able to come up and share a few words about your academic journey, maybe where you look to go to, and thank this person that is standing here with you. As part of the thank you, Please make sure you include your parents or guardians because they've done a lot. Oftentimes, we spend a lot of time thanking everybody else, but we forget about those core people in our lives, those that gave us the 15 minutes. All right. Um, so with that being said, I will in invite uh, Dr. Hansen to come up to be able to read names. Um, once you do come up, you get your honors, you say your thing, you're going to come over here. Uh, we have the backdrop. We'd love to be able to get your picture. You'll then come back to your seat. After we get done with everybody, we'd like to be able to take a group picture. And also, Dr. Hansen would have a few things to be able to say at the end as well. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Joyce. Appreciate it. Good morning, everyone. Well, we'd like to honor our students here today for the exemplary work they've done in the course of their high school curriculum and uh, time here at Toma High School. So our honors will be presented as follows. And first, we'd like to start with our cum laude graduates, Jake Berry. special guest because she is a great role model that has always been there for me. Academically, Lynn has always pushed me to be successful in school. During golf season junior year, I was at a point where I had no motivation to do my homework. But Lynn was always there to tell me how important school was. If it wasn't for Lynn helping me through fourth quarter of junior year, I wouldn't be here receiving an academic award. She has been my person to talk to when life isn't going my way. No matter how mad I am, Lynn always seems to put a smile on my face. Thank you, Lynn, for the advice and the support you've given me. I would also like to thank my parents for pushing me to be successful in school. Lastly, a huge thank you to Mama Schmitz for putting, oh my God, for putting up with me and making school a better place. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
So I'd like to honor right now, from our summa cum laude list, Daniel Gordon. I'd like to start out by thanking my parents for everything they've done for me leading up to this point. From saying goodbye to me every morning to driving two and a half hours to a show bar competition to pick me up early because I had a stomach ache. They've truly done it all and will always be extremely thankful for everything you guys do. The summer after seventh grade, Miss Brahada had to stop giving me drum set lessons since she taught me everything she knew. She told me I should ask Knepper to give me lessons instead. So while he was still in college, he came over to my house and gave me lessons. And that's how I first met him. Since then, he's had a big impact on my life, musically and in general. Ever since he became our band director, he's challenged me and encouraged me to try and become the best musician I can be, whether it be through singing, signing me up for auditions or giving me harder and harder solos to learn. His effect on me could not have been better. I wouldn't be the musician I am today without his help. And even if I don't choose to follow in his footsteps and choose a career in music, the lessons I have learned through band and himself will always have a positive influence on my life and also from our cum laude list, Carly Zingler. my middle and high school band director. It's hard to put into words the kind of teacher and mentor Miss S has been for me as I grew up through band. She was always there to be a friend, amazing teacher, and someone who always pushed me to improve my skills in band. My connection to band is not just because of the music, but also the people that have been through it with me. The amount of time and dedication that she put into helping the band amazes me, and I am so grateful to have her as my mentor. I would also like to say thank you to my parents for putting up with me throughout the years and leading me in the right direction to be successful. Also from our Kumaude list, Charles Devine. an amazing teacher and a role model. Her classroom is such an uplifting environment in which I went to um, in order to escape a reality and my other hard classes. Her positive, supportive, 
and funny attitude every day is what really uh, guided me to love art as much as I do. And I will truly miss her and every class with her. Um, and she has really inspired me to um, choose a career that also uh, has to do with art. So I'll be going into interior design and I'll be doing art on the side. Graduating cum laude, Aaron Perry. So today I brought Miss Emma Huber. She has been my ag advisor since seventh grade and also um, my teacher. I am pursuing a career in animal science and I wouldn't have been able to do that without her. From the countless times of going into her room to get away from any homework assignments that I had to do, I could just sit and talk to her about whatever was going on in my life, whether that was the hardships or something stupid, Miss Huber was always there for me. And even though she left me my senior year to go work somewhere else, um, I, know, I know that she was doing it, um, what, was, what was best for her. And even though it was hard not having her my senior year, uh, she, I was able to, she was always, I was always able to call her, text her, or do whatever I needed to do to get a hold of her. And even though she left, I still have a really great relationship with her, and I would not be where I am today if it weren't for her, and I would not have the love for animals or agriculture that I do if it weren't for Miss Hubert. Well, I'd also like to thank my parents. <laughs> So today with me, I brought um, Miss Huff, as she has been probably one of the best teachers I've had throughout my high school career. I go and talk to her every morning, her and another teacher of mine. Math is one of my least favorite subjects, and she made Algebra 2 and Intro to Stats very much enjoyable. She always puts a smile on my face, and she's just a very nice, calm teacher I can talk to. And um, I would also like to thank my parents. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> Graduating cum laude, Cody Quist. I brought me, with me today Bill Kern. Many of you know him as a teacher or a coach. Whether you had his class and he threw something at you or banging on a desk to wake you up. <laughs> Many know him as a grouchy old man, which he has his times. <laughs> As a coach, he's been very good at pushing out, pushing out a positive mental attitude and not making up excuses when something goes down your way, pushing through it. And that, he's made a lot of big changes in my life, and he's helped me a lot. And I plan to carry a lot of things he taught me into my next steps of life and keep pushing through. I don't parents, too. <laughs> parents, family, all my other coaches, thank you. Graduating cum laude, Natalie Renal. Today I brought with me my Aunt Lee. I am and will be forever thankful for her as she has always been there for me, whether it was just talking with her or confiding in her or her coming over to my house to take care of me and my siblings because of an emergency, she was always there. I would also like to thank my parents because they helped me make me the person I am today and I know they are so proud of me. Graduating cum laude, Angelina Salvino.
So first, I'd like to thank my sister, Vanessa, for coming today. Everyone else was busy, so <laughs> she was the only one that could make it. And I'm forever grateful for her always making time for me when I'm in need. And I'd also like to thank my mentor, Neve. She is unlike any other teacher that I had, and I've always looked forward to her classes, and I miss her greatly throughout this school year. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Graduating cum laude, Hannah Van Trees. I decided to invite my favorite coach, Brady Matheson. I remember as a freshman being intimidated by him because he can be a little frank sometimes. <laughs> but he says what we need to hear and it always makes us laugh. Matheson has been a big motivator for me through high school in and out of softball with his wise words. I have him to thank for always keeping me in mind. Oh, I have him to thank for always keeping in mind confidence is key. Thank you for being a role model in my life, and also thank you to my parents for shaping me into the person I am today. Graduating cum laude, Owen Walker. I'd like to start it out by thanking my parents for everything that they do for me every day. I would not be where I am today without them. The person who I brought with me today is Mrs. Schmitz, AKA Mama Schmitz, or Schmitzy Poo. <laughs> <laughs> no brainer pick as my guest to the honors breakfast this morning. The past two years, she has been there for me for anything and everything I am beyond grateful for her. If I had ever had any questions or had a problem about anything, she's the one to go to. Although I drove her nuts and picked on her a ton, I know she's going to miss me just as much as I'm going to miss her. <laughs> Thank you for everything you've done for me. Moving on to our Magna Cum Laude graduates, Madison Abbas. She's just always been there for me, been a super great person to come back to through everything and come visit throughout the years. I'm very grateful for her and everything that she's done for me. I'd like to thank my parents for everything that they have done for me and mom for her daily notes every day before I go to school. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Graduating Magna Cum Laude, but not here today, Jocelyn Batista. Also graduating Magna Cum Laude, Addison Berry. I would first like to thank my mom for being a supportive and influential person in my life. She pushes me to do my best and I am grateful for everything she has sacrificed for me to be successful. I invited Mr. Youngmeyer today because he has created a fun classroom environment and I have enjoyed having him as a teacher. He has challenged my thinking on different issues, which I believe has helped me become a more well-rounded person. So thank you. Graduating Mag Cum Laude, Courtney Keller. dreams and attending Viterbo for nursing and getting on their bowling team. There isn't anything I can say up here to show that how much he has done for me. 
He has pushed me to my full potential in and out of the alley. He has taught me that even on my worst days, never give up and keep trying. He has shown me that whatever I put my mind to, I can accomplish. From the very beginning, he has never given up on me and has helped me accomplish so many goals of mine. He knows how to keep me going and put a smile on my face on my hardest days. His guidance has shaped my character, values, and my approach to challenges. I can probably say that my coach has had such an impact on my high school career, and I always will be grateful for that. The last thing I want to say is thank you for helping me through my challenges and never giving up on me. Without your help, I wouldn't be where I am today. And finally, I want to thank my parents for getting me to do my homework and actually getting me to school on time. Thank you for all the help and never giving up on me for over the years. Graduating magna cum laude, Elizabeth Kieser. for always showing up to support me in my, all my extracurricular activities. I brought Kate Buner because she has been there to guide me throughout my entire high school career. She has taught me how to become not only a better singer, but also a better person. She teaches her students to be kind of humble people and to always give 100% to everything they do. She's always there to help me through problems I'm having in school or with friends, and I cannot thank her enough for all she's done. Anna Rogers. I want to start off thanking my wonderful parents for being there every step of the way and my wonderful best friend for calling out my questionable actions when they were indeed a little questionable. I brought with me Miss White. She showed me what it meant to be a teacher and not someone who just happened to teach in a classroom setting. When I lost my grandpa to an aggressive form of cancer this year, she was there every step of the way. She was truly a pillar when I needed it. She gave me work when I needed to get my mind off of things. And she gave me kind words when I was in my morning phase. I think anybody who is lucky enough to have her as a teacher can truly say that she touches the lives of every uh, student she teaches. And I just want to thank you for being here. Graduating magna cum laude, Cole Schuler. Although I gave Schmidt every reason to hate me, sorry for cutting your chairs, she was one of the few teachers who didn't, so I want to thank you for that. Thanks, Mom and Dad. <laughs> Graduating Manta Cum Laude, Allison Weaver. I would first like to start off with thanking my parents for striving me to the, be the best I can be. I have brought Senor with me today. I have had the pleasure of being in a classroom with Senor for three years of my high school career in Spanish 2, 4, and 5. I also had the honor of being a TA with him this past year. Senor has taught me many life lessons, but the biggest one was how to be a good person inside and outside of the classroom. He has truly brought joy to my life as we shared many laughs together, and he has made sure to come to class with a smile on his face every single day. For these reasons and many other, I would not think of anyone else to invite. <laughs> Gracias por todo, Senor. <laughs> Moving on to our summa cum laude list, our graduates, summa cum laude, Owen Anderson. <laughs> All right, first off, I'd like to thank my parents for pushing me through everything and making me be the best person I could. Today, I brought with me Ms. Schmitz. Uh, she, she just made school fun and she is one of the best teachers I've had. So, thank you. <laughs> Graduating summa cum laude, Trinity Brock. Today I 
invited Miss Suzanne Swanson Wagner um, because not only did she teach me that I can dance, <laughs> but she also taught me that I am a scholar before I'm an athlete and that my attitude is everything and that things in life are earned, not handed out to you. And she basically gave me my second home. So I'd also like to thank my parents because they always push me to be my best. Graduating summa cum laude, Christopher Burbach. I'll start off with thanking my parents so I don't forget. Um, they have been very, very helpful throughout my high school career and through my middle school career, um, if you want to call it a career. <laughs> they've, I have tried to stay very involved and they've been there driving me around, doing whatever it takes to get me places throughout the entire thing, so thank you. Uh, and thank you to Miss Prohoda because, as you guys probably know, I am a huge music nerd and Miss Prohoda was the one who allowed me to get into music uh, in sixth grade, when I decided I was going to play horn and nothing else, she was there and she helped me through it. I remember all of those lessons. <laughs> so thank you. Graduating summa cum laude, Katrina Carlson. taught me that hard work really does pay off. I'd also like to thank my parents for everything they've ever done for me. <laughs> She taught us things far above just AP Lit. Her class prepared me for all that there is to come in life, and when I'm faced with challenges, I would look, at, look back with a sense of pride, like, I got through that class, this can't be much more difficult than that. <laughs> On top of that, she would always make sure to provide us with a good laugh every morning, so that's why I bought Miss Mary Dean. Graduating summa cum laude, Peyton Foster. When I think of my biggest mentors, my mind goes straight to my parents. They're my biggest role models and supporters, along with my genuine best friends. I could not have done everything leading up to this point without their constant love and guidance. But right up there with them is this goddess warrior, Miss Anna. Anna has been my gymnastics coach for what seems like my entire life. And as some of you know, gymnastics was practically my entire life for a long time, which meant that she became my second mom as I was in the gym practically 24-7. She was there for me in my prepubescent, very tough moments, along with my older teenage, very tough moments. She is one of the best people I know, inside and out. Thoroughly just an amazing human being. She's constantly encouraging me to be my best self and pushing me to reach all of my goals. 
She is the definition of kindness, and I have looked up to her since the minute I met her. I credit a lot of who I am today to this woman, and I hope to be half the woman she is someday. <laughs> Graduating summa cum laude, Bergen Franks. Hi. Whether it was keeping up with grades or getting through stressful times, I can truly say that I'm thankful for my friends and family that support me. Specifically, my mom, dad, sister, and brother. I can't express the amount of appreciation I have for them, for the work they put towards my education, the countless sleep deprived nights, and so on. As for my special guest, I chose Eric Bards. Although I've only known him for the past four years, he's always been approachable and understanding. Eric Bards would always check up with me, create such a welcoming environment, and make sure that everyone enjoyed his class. He demonstrates more than enough respect to his students. Eric Bards' ability to calmly teach each of his classes has reminded me how leaders must remain patient, and I can confidently say that Air Bards has been an inspiration and that my character has forever improved because of what he's done for me inside of school and out. I wholeheartedly wish the best for him and hope he wishes to continue to share his caring and fun-loving personality with his future students as he did for me. My high school career would have been an entirely different story if my family, teachers, and friends weren't there to keep me honest and striving for the best. So thank you all. Today I have brought with me Mr. Scott Conzenius, who taught a civics class with virtues of honesty, tolerance, and patience that will inform my actions for years to come. And of course, I would like to thank my parents, who had brought me up from my most vulnerable point, a baby, to who I am, <laughs> what I am, and where I am today. Graduating summa cum laude, Aisha Gugar Tabago. Also graduating summa cum laude, Ethan Jackson. Mr. Devine is my mentor. Ever since I first met him freshman year, he has always carried a positive attitude. No matter what's going on, he always finds a way to put a smile on his face, which is what I've learned from him. That being said, I'd like to thank Mr. Devine, as well as my parents, for everything that they've done for me. Graduating summa cum laude, Aubrey King. <clears throat> Mrs. Walters, or Coach Walters, has been incredibly influential in my life during high school. I never had her as a teacher, however, she still managed to help and guide me throughout my four years by coaching me in volleyball and also just being someone there for me to listen and give me advice on anything. Coach, Walter, Coach Walters was able to help me improve as a player in my first three years of high school volleyball. However, she did much more than that. She, she did much more than just help me improve my skills. She was the first person at the high school I opened up to about my personal struggles. She was always there to comfort me when needed, but also held me accountable. Now, she wasn't my coach this past season, but she still managed to have an impact on my life. Whether it was giving me a huge hug in the hallway, or seeing me in the special ed room, and giving me a huge smile while asking me about my life, Mrs. Walters was always there to pick me up and put a smile on my face. 
I would also like to thank my parents um, for all that they have done these past 18 years, 18 years, and for always supporting me for most of my decisions. <laughs> <laughs> Graduating Sumu Kamani Gregory Klapa. <laughs> I like to start by saying thank you to my parents. Without their constant nagging to get my homework done, I definitely wouldn't be here right now. So thanks for that. I selected Mr. Devine as my mentor because that's exactly what he is, a mentor. I met Mr. Devine on the first day of seventh grade tennis practice, and his encouragement along with his sense of humor made me fall in love with the sport. Through the ups and downs, he's always found a way to keep me excited to play every single day. He was my teacher for freshman in AP Biology, and he instantly became my favorite teacher. He always incorporates humor into his lessons, whether it be his witty remarks or spot-on impersonations. He always finds a way to make you laugh. Thank you, Mr. Devine, for all you've done. <laughs> Graduating in summa cum laude, Eric Maynard. First off, I want to thank my parents for everything that they've done for me, um, trying to give me the better life that they didn't have themselves. I always appreciate that. Now, for my mentor today, I brought Mr. Thompson. Uh, although I never had him as a teacher, seeing him every morning in the gym kind of motivated me to come, because if he was going to be there, I might as well be there. <laughs> um, that routine that he added to my life just kind of made high school a lot easier to go through. But then senior year, I did powerlifting, and he was my coach for that. And I could never, I, I never saw how kind, funny, and charismatic he was until then. All the jokes and the helpfulness throughout every lift and uh, practicing in the morning just kind of helped me out and made me the person I am today. And um, I just thank my parents and him for all this help. Graduating summa cum laude, Riley Murray. Hello everyone. Today I brought Kate Buner with me as my mentor. Over the past four years, I have had the privilege of Kate not only being my show choir director, but also my voice teacher. I want to thank her for always believing in me challenging me to try new things, <clears throat> and always being a shoulder to lean on. Her kindness, sense of humor, and encouragement has meant the world to me. Thank you for always going above and beyond for me and the rest of your students. You are truly an amazing human and mentor. Finally, I would like to thank my parents for their constant love and support. <laughs> Graduating Sumo Cum Laude, Bryn Newman. Hi. Um, my role model that I invited today is Miss Tanya Jean Go. She not only doubles as my coach and teacher, but also as my aunt. She is one of the most passionate and positive people I know, and you can see these qualities in about everything she does. Growing up, I felt like I was the daughter she never had, with her having four sons, <laughs> and spending time golfing or doing other fun activities was a fun way to strengthen our relationship. It wasn't until I had her as a coach that I realized that playing collegiate golf was in the cards for me, because she pushed me and our entire team to greatness that included four straight MVC champion titles, two regional wins, four sectional wins, and four, four state appearances. It was also her dedication to teaching that inspired me to want to major in education, even if it is in English. Shout out to Miss Neve. <laughs> 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 
Miss Genevico has taught me to dream big, but also to put in the work to make these dreams come true. I know she is one of my biggest cheerleaders in any aspect of my life. I also want to thank my parents for all their love and support and for paying for the gas bill to drive me to every single golf tournament this summer and all of those summers, so thank you. Graduating soon, cum laude, August Newman. Like most of my high school career, I put this off until the very last minute. So I'll just keep it short and sweet. Uh, I would first like to thank my parents, who they deserve this award more than I do for having put up with me and my one or two absences throughout the year. <laughs> and most importantly, I would like to thank Mr. Maximilian Devine here, who met me during one of my most influential moments of my high school career. And without him, I would have still been without a direction. And his class showed me a subject and an area in which I did not know that I had a passion for and a love for and that I will pursue later on down my life. Thank you. <laughs> Graduating summa cum laude, Jonah Nick. and my siblings because my parents were active ever since I was young and my brothers were my role models before that. Um, so yeah, now I've known Mr. Devine for about six years, both as a teacher and a coach, which started in middle school tennis in seventh grade. And from the get-go, he was always uh, like an inspiration on the tennis court, and he kept me going on tennis. and. Throughout the three years that I've had him in high school, he's really been my mentor there. And then I've also had him as a freshman biology teacher and an AP biology teacher. And he always just kept the class engaged. He was one of my best teachers from an education standpoint, but he was also one of the funniest teachers you'll ever see. <laughs> <laughs> from previously mentioned by other students, impersonations, and just always funny mark remarks. He's the funniest teacher I've ever had, <laughs> and the best teacher I've ever had. So thank you, Mr. Thank you. <laughs> Graduating summa cum laude, Lauren Noth. Shane Harris, who is my club volleyball coach as well as my high school coach this year. Um, I cho chose Shane as my mentor because he's kind, smart, funny, and one of the most passionate people I know. As a coach, he pushed me um, because he wanted me to see me succeed in becoming the best player and person I could be. Outside of coaching and volleyball, he does a little bit of everything, including singing, plant caretaking, and amazing baking. And he does these things because he loves it. Um, as I go into college with an undecided major, I hope to emulate this passion and find something I love to do and stick to it. Thank you, Shane, for being a great role model. And just as important, thanks, Mom and Dad, for everything. Graduating summa cum laude, Brady Pluger. I invited Ms. Schmitz as my mentor because she has had a great influence on me all four years of high school. 
Ms. Schmidt saw I was struggling with an online college class this year and took time out of her day to help guide me through the class, which allowed me to pass. Even though she was probably annoyed with me and Spooks trying to get the perfect dap up every single day in her class, I am forever grateful for her unselfishness and desire to create a positive atmosphere. I'd also like to thank my parents for supporting me throughout my high school career. Graduating summa cum laude, Haley Raisin. Okay, I am Hallie Raisin. And <laughs> so I was talking about the concept of emotional intelligence with a peer the other day, and coincidentally, my mentor embodies that perfectly. She has shown me so much empathy and so much understanding throughout the past three years. I had her for chemistry sophomore year and AP chemistry last year, but her impact is still forever lasting. She was exactly what I needed in a time where, as many of you know, I put a lot of pressure on myself in an academic setting, and her reassurance was key. And not only that, but she also helped me find my passion. I happen to love her teaching style, although I did spend my study halls doing her homework every day, but <laughs> it did help me. And um, although I didn't have her this year, her impact will last forever. And I will remember her notes, all of her guidance when I go on to pursue a, an education in chemistry. So, and then I'd also like to thank my parents for reassuring me that I wasn't actually going to fail the test that I swore I was going to fail. <laughs> I never failed. <laughs> and then, uh, last but not least, I'd like to thank the select peers who consistently pushed me to be the best version of myself and were positive impacts on my life. Graduating summa cum laude, Joseph Venner. <laughs> so, first off, I'd like to thank my parents, uh, mostly my mom. She's always been there for me. Uh, I can really tell how much she loves me from everything she does. She supports me in all my decisions. And she always makes me dinner, you know, gets me big and strong. Um, now, I invited Divine. I like Divine because he's funny, like a lot of you guys said, and because he cares a lot. During tennis matches, I'll ask him to fill up my water bottle, and he'll run to the water bottle filler and fill it up and run right back. So that's why I like Divine. <laughs> Graduating summa cum laude, Riley Winrick. Today I brought with me Senor. I brought him in recognition of his incredible passion for his job and for teaching. It is from his sentiment toward teaching that has inspired me to choose a career path that I feel I will enjoy as wholeheartedly as Senor enjoys his own. My time within his classroom will be remembered as some of the best memories of my life, and for that I am forever grateful. Gracias para decirlo. <laughs> Graduating summa cum laude, Amelia Zingler. difficult to narrow down who I should bring. Mr. Briggs, who is not here today, uh, was the person who shaped me into the student and leader I've become. 
There was also Miss Schmidt, who became my school mom and pu pushed me to believe in myself even when I didn't think I could. And then there was also Miss Janimico, who has been in my life for as long as I can remember. So, in honor, I would like to honor Miss Janimico this morning as the person who had the biggest impact on my life. However, she was first known to me as Coach G. Having her as a coach the last four years has shown me what I need to do in order to be a great teammate and how to be a great leader as well. She without a doubt always knew how to push me to become better, but also motivate me even when the rounds aren't going my way. She is the reason I have found my passion and have the opportunity to play golf in college. I am so blessed to have such an inspirational role model in my life. Finally, I would also like to thank my parents for embarking on this journey with me and supporting me every step of the way. I would not be here today if it weren't for their love and support. Sponsors First Community Bank, or excuse me, Credit Union, and Toma Area Credit Union, uh, as well as Bandbox, and for today's meal, Wetlands Catering. Thank you all very much. We know that your philanthropic dedication to our community is felt everywhere, and especially here today. So, ladies and gentlemen, another round of applause for our. <laughs> Amazing, special occasions like this without the extraordinary gifts and talents of our Toma High School faculty. I want to thank Mrs. Pierce, Mr. Joyce, Ms. Kasputis from our district office, and all of the teachers here in attendance today who make this a wonderful occasion to honor students each and every year. And I also want to thank all of our teachers here today and those that have always been in the lives of our students, all those teachers, coaches, advisors, and school employees playing a role in our uh, playing a role in the education of our students. My special thanks to our parents and guardians here today because academic excellence is absolutely a family commitment and I want to thank you on behalf of the Toma Area School District for being our partners in education. Finally, our graduates, oh my gosh, thank you, thank you so much for your extraordinary dedication to academics. Your course curriculum represented the most rigorous educational opportunities provided at Toma High School uh, including post-secondary coursework offered through agreements with our university and technical school partners. Your achievement is exemplary, as you've also dedicated yourself to many pursuits outside of the classroom. There's no doubt that the masterpiece of educational excellence you've created here at Toma, Area High, School, Toma High School will continue to develop and flourish along the next steps of your educational journey, inspiring and leading you to new heights. Thank you so much, graduates. Congratulations, and we'll see you on Saturday. Thank you, Dr. Hanson. I also just have a few little housekeeping things. We'd like to be able to get a group photo of all of our um, honors graduates here in, in just a little bit, but also remember that we do have graduation rehearsal tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. You must be there. Um, <laughs> uh, just, if you have any questions regarding graduation, you can certainly see me as well. And then the other thing is, is that, you know, we heard some really good stories about journeys, about how we got here and people that influenced it. Don't be afraid to share um, some of the things that you look to be doing in the future, the schools that you look to be going to, and the majors that you look to, to achieve. Uh, it's been really neat to be able to, to hear about those. Um, in these last couple of months too, so don't, don't be shy to share those. Congratulations again, and have a wonderful day. Um, Ethan, <laughs> can you switch with Kate, maybe? Okay, and then over, yeah. Oh, I think so, the, the second yeah, wait, row behind my first row yeah. standing, make sure you're in between, so that we can actually see your face. Yeah, my, my, people behind, behind, my people behind sitting, I need you to kind of, there we go. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
so it doesn't look. Cody, kneel, please. Yes. <laughs> We also want them, Donna. It doesn't matter. I love her, but. Make sure everyone's looking at me, please. All right. Thank you. portion of the community update. We've been out here at Cranberry Country Lodge on Thursday, May 25th for the Toma High School Honors Banquet. We hope you enjoyed it. They're on the Hagen Sports Network. Congratulations to the class of 2023 with graduation going on this Saturday. But again, part of that this past Thursday, the 25th of May, out here for all the, the honors breakfast, for all the senior high school honors students honored, as you saw a moment ago, and we hope you enjoyed it.